you know, it could be one thing, if, like I said before in another podcast, if there's two or three reports and that's it. But the fact that there's like thousands of new death experience reports and not only that, like it would be another thing if they're inconsistent, but the fact that they are consistent between thousands of different reports from thousands of different people, to me, that just points to, at the very least, an anomaly, something that we cannot explain. And the reason why we can't explain it or reduce it down to hallucinations, dreams, or things of that sort is because, um, well, it turns out when the brain is dead, that stuff doesn't work. And I'm actually going to dive deeper into that. If we have time at the end of this one, if not, I can uh, push it to another podcast. You know, there really are these common themes, like that's what we would call it in qualitative research, right? Which there's quantitative research, which is experimental using numbers and statistics. Um, Qualitative research focuses on interviewing participants um, and then find and looking at the statements from those participants and then finding co- common themes that match that match most of the participants or if not all mm, yeah it's actually a legit type of research that's peer-reviewed and published in scientific journals and is taken seriously and I'm sure there are qualitative studies because I know there's been near-death experience studies published like in scientific journals and stuff across thousands of near-death experiences people have very similar initial feelings like people say they feel relaxed they feel peaceful right after they die um they're often like start on like darkness or something like that and they just feel this kind of sense of peace or comfort um not something you would expect after death a lot of them also mention hearing specific noises Sometimes they mention hearing music or like a buzzing noise kind of thing or ringing sounds like which they kind of say is like buzzing. Uh, people also interpret it as like hearing bells, like almost everyone's heard about the tunnel, right? It's like almost a cliche at this point. But the tunnel thing has been found across the board on a lot of them. So it's usually like a tunnel of light. And some people describe it as a tunnel of light, but it's interesting. People will describe the same thing in different ways. So some people will say it's a tunnel of darkness, but the light is at the end of it. Mm -hmm. you know or that there's multiple colors within this tunnel as they're going towards this light Mm. um and then yeah you hear it all the time in the movies right yeah yeah. it's like uh look for the light the outer body experience where the soul leaves the body and that that one in particular there's a lot of similarities where people report seeing very specific details like in a surgical operation or medical operation where they would not have known those details if they had not left their body where it just doesn't make sense for them to have that knowledge or even specific things that happened when they were dead. You can't account for that. The only reason they could have known is if they actually went outside their body kind of approaching this, what they call a city. They always describe like this wall around the city and it's usually like a large stone structure with like gemstones in it and stuff. They say the colors are beyond our understanding. Like they can't, they can't even find words to describe them. Mm -hmm. They say that the light, and the colors that no human being on earth could withstand. They say there's usually a landscape with like grass, trees, and stuff like that. Various different buildings. People describe seeing a library, all kinds of different stuff. And then, of course, you probably heard this, Jose, like people say they see their loved ones who had passed away. One person even described seeing someone that they didn't even know passed away until after they died. So that's kind of strange. You couldn't make the argument then that, oh, well, they knew they passed away, so that's why they hallucinated it, right? but they didn't even know that the person had passed away. They also, of course, say seeing a powerful being, which we believe is God. They say the being is like, um, emanates this feeling of love and light. Almost everyone has like a life review. Then they say returning to the physical world is like a roller coaster and that's often very painful. If, if they were to be different, like we said in a previous podcast, like uh, you said DMT is, you know, uh, a certain drug that's taken right. to hallucinate sort of stuff but the fact that it has very similar aspects or similar experiences means that you know maybe they are tapping into something that is generally the same for everyone right it's it's a similar experiences which means that the place that they're traveling or whatever they're experimenting could be a reality there's several patients in this one doctor's book he talked about and he was even skeptical before he studied all this himself where these patients describe cardiac um like operations in a, in very specific detail times they described it in such accuracy that you know like the nurses and staff that were doing operations said 
like detail by detail, like what they actually did was described by the person who had the near death experience. What I find most interesting is how they described the outer body experience itself. Like how we talked before about the soul, they had no physical characteristics. Some people say that they can't describe it in physical terms. Some people say that they um, go in, they go out of the body, but they go into something else. And it wasn't like nothing, but they say they go into like another body, but it's not a human body. And they say it's not a glob of matter. It's like, there's no form, no colors, but it's like something where they still like have some form of hands. Well, and then this other person says, I'm looking at that it was like a ball, like a round ball that they're in almost, you know, or like a capsule. Someone else calls it a capsule that is transparent. Maybe what they're going into is their spiritual body. Yeah, and it's interesting how they describe it. Uh, some, some as like a capsule or something that go, they go inside when they leave their body. A lot of these people come back from the death, you know, experience, say that they can't describe it in, they, there's certain parts of it they can't describe in human words. Like this person says like, you know, I have to try to describe you what I saw in three-dimensional terms, but I can't, it's just not adequate enough. Or other people say like the colors, I can try to explain it to you in human and earthly terms, but it's just not good enough. It doesn't even come close to describe. Yeah, you know? yeah and it makes sense if if you, if your spirit transcends into another dimension, we don't, we can't comprehend what's in the fourth, fifth dimension, yeah, like which is what we were talking about, yeah. right? The shapes, the colors, the textures, the the movement of things, you know, is completely different because we're talking about things that are moving outside of time. So there's not, you know, for example, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you, that omnipresence aspect where I could just teleport to another place just automatically is, right. is a reality in, in the fourth dimension because you're not subject to, to time and space. Like